The Grand Rapids Gold. <laughs> Finally, we have a G League team to talk about, vote. This is exciting, Harrison Wynn. This is exciting. The Denver Nuggets have uh, – they've had a lot of talent kind of stuck yeah. at the end of their bench. Not really sure what to do with it. Uh, now there's a different route, an alternative path. Excited to talk about it with you today. Definitely. Welcome into the DMVR Nuggets podcast, the DMBA show. We are presented, of course, by DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, make sure to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Top Use rating. code DNVR when you sign up. It's We got the DMBA show logo up there right now, but should be the DraftKings logo. Probably get that changed. Probably my fault. Um, anyways, <laughs> there we go. There it is. Download DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DMVR when you sign up. Tons of great deals going on on DraftKings Sportsbook. As always, on today's show, it's me, it's Brendan Vote. We'll go over some other final notes we have from the Nuggets win last night at Ball Arena. I was there. I will also preview the G League season. The Nuggets, the, the Nuggets G League team, the Greater Rapids Gold, opens their season tonight, tonight in Sioux Falls, uh, where many classic G League games have been played. Uh, including Nuggets players, most specifically Tory Craig over the years. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll also go over some preseason predictions that we might have messed up on and uh, take Just some mulligans on those. Um, but vote. Let's start with last night. Uh, the Nuggets, of course, get a big win at home. Their third straight win. Will Barton goes off with Nicole Jokic out of the lineup. Anything left for you on the cutting room floor that you guys didn't get to on the post game show that you want to go over here? I mean, there was so much to talk about, man, that I, I could go 20, 30 minutes, but we didn't have you Let's on the it. show last night. You were at ball. So I appreciated the updates, but I want to know what you thought, man. <laughs> uh, my first big takeaway, and I mean, you guys definitely hit on this last night, and I wrote about it last night, but. Will Barton was phenomenal last night, and he's been phenomenal so far this season. Here's a stat for you on Will Barton vote. There are three players in the NBA right now averaging 17 and a half points, four rebounds, four assists, and shooting better than 40% from three this season. Three players are doing that. The three players are Kevin Durant, Nikola Jokic, and Will Barton. And... <laughs> There's small sample size with that, of course. You're of course. drilling down to some numbers, but that's looking at players who are making an all-around impact that are also shooting it really accurately from three. Kevin Durant, Nicole Jokic, Will Barton, the only players in the league averaging 17.5 points, four rebounds, four assists, and shooting better than 40% from three. Without Nicole Jokic, without Michael Porter, without Jamal Murray, like Denver absolutely needed Will Barton last night and he rose to the occasion. He stepped into the spotlight and honestly, it wasn't too surprising because we've seen him do it in the past. Um, but he was phenomenal last night and he's been phenomenal this season. And um, it's been fun to watch. That stat's funny. Cause you know, Barton's obviously not a star, but he really is at that top of the tier of good starters that aren't stars. And you can yeah. find there's been stats like that in the past where like, you know, Barton's the low guy on a group of players that clear a certain number, but the other 10 guys above him are stars. Right. And then it's him who's the only, you know, kind of like not all star caliber player who sort of sneaks into these conversations. Uh, obviously, it's early in the season. Guys who are in stars will have their ups and downs and, you know, Barton's will come eventually. But for now. We but we've all look the obvious question is where would this team be without Jokic? But one thing I kind of appreciated about last night posed a different question. I mean, where would they be without Thrill right now? Absolutely. Look, Michael Porter Jr. was supposed to be the guy yep. to be that relief valve for Nicole Jokic so he doesn't have to carry the load night in, night out this season. He hasn't been that guy. Um, he's out with a back injury right now that still seems pretty mysterious. Yeah. Uh, now that we're sitting here and he's about to miss what's probably going to be um, his third straight game with this tomorrow against the Hawks. They haven't officially ruled him out, but I'm expecting them to. Sure. Uh, maybe that news will break while we're on here. Maybe he'll pull. I don't know. I'm not expecting him to, but it just seems pretty mysterious. They they absolutely need somebody just to flat out score the ball. And Will Barton has absolutely done that. He's shooting it great from three. He's posting career highs and points 
uh, three point percentage assists, um, three point makes like, like he's on pace to have an absolutely career year. Yeah. And part of it's not really surprising because the chatter that we were talking about around him, uh, leading into the season was he's finally healthy. He didn't enter last season really that healthy. He was rehabbing all last off season, uh, but he was in a great space mentally and physically and it's showing. So, uh, they've absolutely needed him to be this guy and he has been. And yeah, I agree. Um, they would be in a pretty tough spot without him. It's crazy, man. I mean, before that first injury, he was playing the best ball of his career. Then he gets hurt. Then he comes back. He's briefly playing at that level again. Then he gets hurt again. Yeah. And and now he's topping it. So the other thing you really like is he was all over Instagram. Barton is a pretty top follow after a good game. Uh, yeah. Post game for, Barton. Yeah, just talking about how much he wants this. That was apparent in, in training camp and preseason. And it's apparent now. Um, it's just really cool to see, you know, and I do think we kind of forget that not every player in the NBA is necessarily sharing that perspective or in a situation that inspires that perspective. But Barton 10 years in, that's where he's at. He is trying to win yeah. in a Denver Nuggets uniform. Um, and it's just really cool to see how much he wants it right now. And he's also like a, the rug's been pulled out from under him a couple of times. So it's a regular season moment. We're still waiting to see Thrill do it in the playoffs when healthy, but really, really cool to see it so far. Yeah, it's it's been a wild ride with Barton in Denver. He's been here for seven seasons, the entire time Michael Malone's been here. Um, he's the longest tenor nugget, obviously. And I wrote this last night, like I said, on the DNVR, D, the DNVR.com, uh, if you want to go and find it. But Will Barton and the Nuggets haven't always seen eye to eye on everything. And there's been a couple instances over the last couple of years that have really rubbed him the wrong way like when the Nuggets held a very public open competition for small forward, that was the season after he had just gotten booed in the playoffs, of course, game two versus San Antonio. And he comes into training camp and learns there's an open competition for small forward after, you know, he had started most of the games that season. He was irked by that. I know that yeah. for a fact. Yeah. Then when he left the bubble, there was honestly tension between the Nuggets and Barton that really entire off season. Uh, until he got back to Denver just about his injury and because he couldn't get the type of treatment that he really thought he needed in the bubble. So it's been a roller coaster, but for what the Nuggets need and for what Will Barton can provide, it's the perfect marriage right now. So it's been really fun to watch. And really close to not happening, which is, I mean, that offseason, like back-to-back offseasons where Grant bounces and that was plan A. Now Murray's hurt. You don't have the money to go get anyone. You have to bring Will Barton back. I mean, teetering yeah. on the edge of disaster two consecutive off seasons. So just fun, just fun to be on the other side of it. What else did you see, man? I mean, Zeke Naji, a little mind meld with bull. Uh, and I guess hilariously, not that surprising that in the end, Harrison, the NBA experience has mattered more than the summer league disaster. <laughs> yeah. How about that? How about that? Uh, no, Zeke happened. was great. Zeke was great last night. Uh, he, he was absolutely great. And it, it's funny because we talked about how that bench unit has needed a rolling big man so much early this yeah. season. And it's a big reason why like there hasn't been the healthy type of offense on that unit. Like, there's been so many pick and pops and guys just haven't been getting to the rim. Bones right. gets to the rim and, and him really captaining that second unit. We're going to talk about that a little later has, I think changed the, the, the dynamic of that group a lot, but Zeke just being a roller and just doing that every single time he got into that action with bones and um, just doing his job and being in the right place and playing within himself. Uh, that was big. And him showing that him showing what he showed last night, that wipes out everything that yep. he did bad at summer league. Summer yep. League is now gone. He had a great game, his first game in the rotation this season. We no longer have to talk about how bad he was at Summer League. And now it's fun. The conversation can be, obviously, in the meantime, he's this, the next man up here, especially with Flacco recovering, but played himself yeah. into a good spot long term. I mean, if you're looking at ways to break up Dos Verdes together on the bench, barring for a, a center acquisition, which seems unlikely, especially a quality center at this point, 
Zeke's the best option. So it was good for him, I think, to put that thought back in Malone's mind, put that card in his back pocket. Yeah. Uh, anything else that you're uh, still thinking about from from last night's game? Can you think of another jump ball highlight off the top of your head? Yeah, that's a good point. That's Might be the only point. one in NBA history, but that's a legitimate highlight, high leverage play. And uh, I just wanted to say this. I wrote it in the player grades last night, but while uh, Paul Millsap and Aaron Gordon don't remind me of each other on the court at all, there was still a certain torch past here. Much like Millsap, Gordon, if you're really trying to pinpoint his value to this team, you can't go box score hunting. I mean, you just got to... It was the the offensive rebounds, which you do see in the box score, sure. But that tipped ball, that jump ball, uh, was among the most important plays of the game. Absolutely. Like Gordon shot up to get that thing and then set a great screen for Will um, yep. on that. My final note from last night, and I said this for a second on the postgame show, but I want to say it again. The Nuggets always win these type of games. Hmm. No Jokic, sure. no Barton. Or no, not no Martin, no Jamal Murray, no Michael Porter. They're so undermanned. They're so shorthanded. Of course, they should probably lose this, just like they should have lost the Utah Seven, just like they should have lost that game in Milwaukee, right? Uh, a couple years back on the second night of a back to back. They always win them. I, I think mostly because Nikola Jokic is just that good, and you just put some capable, average players around him, and Denver can win a game. Yeah. But Nicole Jokic didn't play last night, you know? And so now there's only been one constant in all these shorthanded wins, and that's Michael Malone. And I kind of think Michael Malone's a really good coach. I was talking to Caitlin Cooper, who hopped on the playback last night, really good Indiana Pacers writer for Indy Corners. Yeah, she's great. And she was telling me this morning how – and she knows, like, Rick Carlisle and Indiana's playbook really well because she watches every game that they play and every sequence and play that they run. She was telling me how well Michael Malone had his players prepared and how well he did the scout for the actions that Rick Carlisle and Indiana run. And that's something that just watching it, most of us aren't going to pick up on. Like sure. I'm not going to pick up on that just watching it live. Um, but Michael Malone prepares like no one else. And at least from her perspective, the Nuggets players were very prepared defensively uh, for last night's game. And that's something that she noticed. So Michael Malone, probably a very good coach. Are we sure though, that it wasn't Jamal Murray's uh, scouting reports off the bench as an assistant coach? <laughs> no, look, they get, <laughs> they get these wins and you know, these wins come in a certain fashion that, um, really fits Malone's identity more than anyone else. And you're right that it's Jokic's talent first and foremost, anytime you're answering any of these questions, but this is the Nuggets going out and matching their coach's personality and energy and identity on the floor, right? They did not have all the tools needed to win this game. They did have the right preparation, the right uh, energy level on defense, the right level of focus. And that's just the stuff that Malone preaches every day, every day. So, as you see these types of wins start to pile up, again, there will be ebbs and flows to this sort of success for the Nuggets. I'm just going to try to remind myself, if it ever looks like the Nuggets aren't playing hard, I don't think that's a Malone problem because they certainly seem to find a way to play inspired ball for him uh, when he needs it most. Yeah, and this team right now is just playing in Michael Malone's image. Um, it's insane. I mean, I, I believe, is Nicole Jokic still top defensive rating in the league i don't know but the nuggets are number two in defensive rating holding steady 11 games into the season behind only the golden state warriors and yeah they've totally bought on that side of the floor i've been putting this out a lot on twitter i put out a huge compilation of nicole Jokic's defense against miami he has been so good defensively this it's year insane. particularly around the rim it's incredible how good he's been defensively and it will fly under the radar. That's that's fine. You know, that's why we're here to talk about it. Right. But he's been so good protecting the rim, so much better than in years past. I think he's just caring about it a lot more this season. And the shape he's in and his increased athleticism, I think that's something that goes along with that too. Um, but he really feels like he's leveling up on that side of the ball. 
Yeah, I mean, there's the only argument against a level up is just that it's only been 11 games. Is that sustainable given his offensive workload? But yeah. it's just a reality that he's on a different different tier right now as a defensive player. And I touched on this on the show. It's cool that Barton's playing great defense. Having Aaron Gordon helps a lot. But arguably the number one ingredient in this new and improved defense is that their center is an anchor. And, and that's the first time in the Yoka chair that's been the case. Yeah, that's how it's got to be. You know, usually your back line – defensive anchor a lot of times is your center and yeah i mean it seems like it's Jokic right now of course aaron gordon is, is the one change that's really happened and it he's helps. been unbelievable yeah. defensively yeah. too i mean he's been so freaking good um it's it's incredible that's also not getting talked about enough just how good of a fit he's been a much better yeah. fit than jeremy grant like if we're being yeah totally and i guess it's almost like a fool's errand to try to find one factor i guess more more to the point these things are adding up to um a more believable yeah. it's not just like oh their efforts there they're gonna finish 12th in defense this year like no they actually are a good defensive team that feels different i'm gonna i keep saying one last point but i got another one i like this point from zarko here uh was talked about a little bit today on nuggets twitter malone's mo is a stubborn coach certainly well earned but reality check for this year he has not been in stubborn mode he has been in search mode there's a guy who told us in training camp preseason the bench it's going to be a bit of an adventure. It's going to be malleable. They're going to have to try to figure it out. Um, I know yep. injuries have played into seeing different guys, but if you've been following Ryan Blackburn and his rotation stuff on Twitter, following this Nuggets team, it's very clear that Malone is actually trying different things, pulling a lot of different levers. So I get that some people find the stubborn thing to be a setback, and it can be, and it has been, but this year um, it's really not how I would classify his approach. I sit next to Ryan at games a lot. And I watch him put together the rotation chart. <laughs> and every time Malone deviates from his usual rotation and is like, oh, there's Austin Rivers. Oh, wait, fuck, who's up? I just turn to him and I go, good luck on that rotation chart tonight. Yeah, <laughs> every time. You can just because, hear him groaning. Yeah. Because like you said, it's been unpredictable. He's looked to change oh, yeah. things up. You, It's not been a constant every single game. So, uh, yeah, that's a good point, Patrick. He's definitely been faster to make changes this season that's what we're talking about no question about it no question about it uh you might have noticed another change uh where the nuggets play basketball it's now ball arena everyone knows that by now who are we kidding and you should know by now that ball core is a sponsor a partner at dnvr and you need you need to know that people are what make ball special people at every level come into work each day and give 100 percent to accomplish the goals Ball's production techs are frontline in their can-making operations. They directly impact the volume of production they run, quality of production. They're integral to operations. Uh, Ball is about this message. If you're going to go work for them, you are a human being. Uh, you're not a number. You're not a statistic. Uh, they want you to feel valued that way, identified that way, appreciated that way. It's one of the things we love about Ball. So if you're looking for work and that sounds appealing to you, I've got a little suggestion. Text GOLDEN. To 77222, you'll get linked to open positions with Ball. You can also go directly to jobs.ball.com and search for Golden. That's jobs.ball.com and search for Golden, or simply text Golden to 77222. Harrison, have you ever heard of DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app? Heard of them. Heard of them. Yeah. Love them. Absolutely love them. Big fans. I win a lot of money betting on basketball. But uh, football fans, you can win a lot of money as well. Obviously, it's football season, and right now when you bet on any NFL game this week with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, new customers who bet just $1 on either team to score will win $100 in free bets if a team scores, when a team scores, let's be honest. DraftKings customers, uh, Sportsbook customers can also get skin in the game with new same game parlays. Combine multiple bets from the same game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, the more money you can win. If that sounds complicated to you, if you are new to sports betting, but it does sound fun. I humbly and strongly suggest the DNVR bet show on our YouTube channel, RK, Andre, the doctors. They're going to make you some cash. They'll get you uh, hooked up with some smart same game parlays. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code DNVR, bet $1 on either team to score and win $100 in free bets if they score. You score with promo code DNVR this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. <laughs> Must be 21 or older, Colorado only, new customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. Love it. All right. Back here on the DNBA show, the DNVR Nuggets podcast. Let's preview some G League, Brendan. Let's do it. Let's preview 
the Grand Rapids Gold. They play tonight in Sioux Falls. Um, I can sense around the Nuggets organization, at least from what I gathered last night, a lot of optimism, a, a lot of excitement around the Grand Rapids Gold. There's a contingent of Nuggets front office people who flew up to Grand Rapids, or not to Grand Rapids, to Sioux Falls. Uh, to, to Sioux Falls uh, last night, I believe, after the game to get ready for this opener. So it's been a long time coming. The Nuggets finally have a G League team. And yes, we're here to preview it today. Finally. Do we think Tim's there? I think Tim is there. He he can't stay away, man. He loves shoes. I'd be surprised if he, he wasn't. He just loves this shit so much. Like so much. <laughs> Tim Conley like trades for Aaron Gordon, pulls off the blockbuster at the deadline, like re-signs Will Barton. I think the thing he jo- enjoys most is just old school scouting. So if he just watching G League games, this is just like right up his alley in some small gym in uh undrafted North sharpshooter Matt Ryan. I'm there. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, let's let's preview um, the Grand Rapids Gold here, starting with the player that I'm the, starting with the player who has probably the biggest name on this roster. Sure, and he's he's towards the bottom there, Ali. If you want to show his picture for the the good people watching, Lance Stevenson is on the Grand Rapids Gold. The Nuggets selected him in the G League draft. If you didn't watch Lance Stevenson or if you are wondering what Lance Stevenson has been up to last played in the NBA in 2018, 19 in 2019, 20, the season before the pandemic, he was actually playing in China, averaged 27 points, seven and a half rebounds, four assists per game. He wants to get back into the NBA. Of course. Um, That's like (laughs) why he went back into the G league. He's trying to get um, just, a door he's trying to sneak through a crack in a door just to get on a roster. This is an opportunity to do that scale one to 10 vote. How excited are you to watch Lance Stevenson? Um, not particularly excited, man. Uh, just cause I feel like if this is an audition, it just, I don't, maybe it's for other teams as well. You know, I know the nuggets bench needs some help, but it is kind of really hard to see Lance Stevenson, hopping on that uh that nuggets train so th- it's i mean it's the kind of move that is going to draw eyes right it's going to be something to talk about for people like us something to watch and like you said the reality is like stevenson can still ball on, on certain levels but play, certainly played well overseas so i mean what he has can he contribute it's a legit question but it's just been so long since lane stevenson was relevant in the nba you know that to be excited about it almost feels i I would almost feel sheepish about it plus man i'm just gonna say this get this out of the way because it'll come up uh it's been 11 years but lance stevenson uh also arrested for a pretty horrible domestic abuse case in back in 2010 um when he pushed his girlfriend down a flight of stairs and then hit her head on the bottom step so you know, I mean, I believe in, in, in people changing and growth and time. And it was 11 years ago, so I'm not going to talk about it every time we bring up Lance Stevenson. But I do want to touch on it at least once as he's now a part of this Nuggets roster. Um, as far as being excited to watch and like celebrate him, I'm reluctant if that's uh, if that's fair. OK, fair, fair enough. That's fair. Um, our guy Flo chimes in here on the Super Chat. He, of course, he's excited for Peter. Yes, we will get to Peter. I'm very excited for Peter Cornelia as That's well. That's right. Um, with Lance, here's what I've heard about him uh, just throughout G League training camp up there in Grand Rapids. He's kind of taken on the mentor leadership type role on this team. Like, I, I think if you're looking for a captain on this team, that's been Lance so far. That's the role he's kind of embracing. And look, I don't think it's out of like the realm of possibilities that he eventually makes it onto an NBA roster. I had heard there was like significant interest from a couple of teams last year in signing him at the end of last season. So the possibilities out there, uh, he's just got to, you know, look good. I'm sure he's got to shoot the three. Well, but yeah. I'm, I'm somewhat excited for, for Lance Stevenson, a guy I'm a little more excited for is Nick Stauskas. Mm. Um, yep. 
another huge name on this Grand Rapids goal team. Of course, former lottery pick, went to Sacramento after starring at Michigan, then kind of played himself out of the league. But, you know, Nick Stauskas, he could always really shoot it. Uh, He's a little better ball handler than people give him credit for. And look, this is something I wrote in Wind Chimes on Monday, uh, a weekly column that you can that you get access to if you're a member on the DNVR.com. Just stuff I'm hearing around the team, and that includes the G League team. But the Nuggets, I think, are already starting to prepare for the financial crunch that could happen next season right. on right. their NBA roster. They've got three max contracts. They've got Aaron Gordon. They've got Will Barton. They're not going to have a ton of money to work with. The Nuggets recently sent a scout on like a three-month trip in Europe to scout players and it's a scout that doesn't really go over to Europe that often. I, Mm. or during the season, at least not, not like for three months at a time. I don't think. Sure. I just get the sense that they're really placing a priority on trying to find another Tory Craig, another Faka Campazzo who they can sign for cheap and come over to bolster their rotation next season. And I'm not ruling it out that one of these guys on the G league could also maybe be that type of dude. Maybe yeah. that's Nick Scousis. I don't know. So th- that's why I'm, I'm especially interested in a couple of these guys. Maybe, you know, next year we're seeing these guys on the Nuggets. Absolutely. I think that's nail on the head. And Nick Stauskas is the exact kind of guy, right, who, okay, he's been in the league. You're not expecting him to come in and and level up as a player, but it's going to be – you're going to need to piece together cheap end of the benches. And also, who are we kidding? As of right now – players currently on the bench. It's not like many or any of them are, are boasting like a much more successful campaign than Stauskas has already notched. So I, is he a guy that can help that bench? Absolutely possible. Really curious to see what he looks like at the G league level in terms of being able to penetrate, because that is a real thing that this current bench. And I know we're mostly talking about next year, but just thinking about right now, the makeup, it's something that they can't do. Uh, he's going to need to shoot the three at a high level, but the G League thing is not just an accessory for the Nuggets. I really like the way you framed that point because it could very well be a well they dip into to sort of fill out these rosters. So it's something to worth start watching now. That's worth start watching now and, and keeping an eye on. Yeah, I've heard Stauskas has looked good in training camp as well. And I would not be surprised if there's a lot of call-ups from Grand Rapids to the Nuggets this season, you know, more than... Yeah a lot of typical G league teams have Stauskas played for the Raptors G league team last year, average 18 points a game, 37% from three. So pretty decent numbers in the G league for, you know, a non point guard. Right. Right. Uh, Let's move on to, I guess the guy who I think is the third most prominent player here for the grand Rapids gold, Peter Cornelie. Mm -hmm. Signed to a two-way contract with the Nuggets. He's been in Grand Rapids really for their entire training camp. He's going to spend a lot of the season there. Is this the guy that that you're most excited to watch vote? He's up there. I mean, he's up there with Stauskas for me, mostly because I am just, if if nothing else, I am curious about who he is today uh, in this environment and in the NBA if we see him at that level. But I don't think we're going to see much of it. And so obviously the gold is our best chance to get a look. Really curious to see how he looks from a mentality standpoint, from a confidence standpoint. It would be, I think, that much more. He would be definitely at the top of this list if he carried with him some of the more traditional skills of a center. You know, what Denver doesn't have right now coming off the bench. Because then you go, okay, here's a big body. Can he be a role threat? Can he be what Dos Verdes is not? Um, of course, we know Cornelli's a different Cornelli, excuse me, a different type of player. So a little less excited because of that dynamic. All the same, I want to see him play. Yeah, absolutely. We talked about this a little bit in the preview series we did with Peter Cornelli, but he really came out of nowhere to have a career year in France last season, doubled his points per game from seven to 14, rebounded it really well. His three-point shot really came on, too. He shot 44% from three after like never shooting above 40% really throughout an entire European season before. So he really grew his stock last season. And I'm impressed with Corner Lee, uh, 
what he did last year, his shooting, his athleticism, kind of the edge he played with, but also just the fact that, look, this guy was playing in France, probably a pretty good life over there, you know, like good cities, good, good lifestyle. Right. He's playing for a good team or I don't, I don't even know if he was playing for a good team, but he's playing in France's top league. That was probably a pretty good life. You know, now he's going to schlep from Grand Rapids to Sioux Falls to Rio Grande <laughs> Valley on a commercial flight. Like, that's a big lifestyle change. So I'm at least a little impressed that he's willing to spend a lot of the season in Grand Rapids in the G League and try to make the NBA because he had a very comfortable life in France, I'm sure. But he's chasing his dream. So I respect that. Yeah, that's a great point. Why is he here? You know, the NBA career, is it that important? Is it that important to him that he would prioritize it above convenience and comfort? And, you know, that that he even does it is your first glimpse into, we've talked at length about, okay, how is he going to look in terms of confidence, mentality? Does he want to be there? Is he ready for it? Um, just that he's even willing to take this step at this stage in his, his, his life and his career suggests absolutely. So that is one of the more intriguing elements of it. Um, what is he after here? What, what what NBA career does he see for himself? What type of role does he hope he can carve out? Um, I love this stuff, man. I love the bubble professional athletes, like guys who may or may not hit their dream here. And, yeah. you know, we like Jokic was that type of a dude in the draft and very quickly became a top tier level of player in the world. None of these guys are going to be Jokic. So who will they be? How long will they last? This is fun stuff to, to think about. Yeah. Uh, Flo chimes in and says his former team was average last year. So average. Gotcha. Um, Chris brings up a good point here. And while we're on like the guys that have to do with the nuggets, we should probably mention bowl because sure. Marcus Howard is on this Grand Rapids gold roster too. You can see him right there. I haven't heard that there's uh, like plans right now to send him to Grand Rapids, but I'm sure he'll spend a little bit of time there. Look, he played last night. So, you know, he's like playing for the Nuggets right now. So I don't know how much time he'll spend with the G League. But Chris asks, are we expecting Bull to spend time there or is he professionally resting? Look, I mean, well, he, he was available last night, but he didn't play, right? Bull was the only player on the roster who didn't log a minute. So, yep. I mean, look, he's going to – the value is not going to go up for the rest of the league until someone sees him play basketball. He is almost certainly not going to play basketball for the Denver Nuggets. So I know it's on record. You asked Bull if he's excited to go to the G League, and he effing said no. Um, so <laughs> I, you know, he may not be pumped about it, but this is his best chance to play himself into a different, pers uh, you know, league perspective on him to change to get a, a cheap flyer with another team. OKC, are you listening? So it's got to be here. It's got to be here if he's going to get a shot. <laughs> Okay, see, that would be the team he would play on. Yeah, everyone send Presti a letter once a week. Just like, look, dude, if you're going to do the Poku thing, just double down. A second rounder is all, all we're asking for. Yeah. Yeah, so James Wiseman was a very high draft pick with the Warriors uh, two years ago. Played his rookie season, but was injured and is injured right now. He's actually with the Warriors G League team. And... What stuck out to me and why I'm bringing this up is James Wiseman was chomping at the bit to play in Santa Cruz with the Warriors G League team. He was like, look, I know I'm coming into a really good team. I know I got to like get up to speed. I, I know I was injured. I, I know I got to get some reps, get some running. He was very excited, or at least he said this publicly. Maybe he thought right. something else privately. <laughs> but publicly, his quotes were, I can't wait to go to Santa Cruz. I can't wait to play in the G League. I can't wait to get some run. Like I would love for Bull to say that because it's the best thing for him right now. He's obviously not going to play with the Nuggets right now. Yep. If he, like last night was a very good example of that. So go to the G League, put up numbers, and if you want to get traded, that's your best avenue to doing that. So I hope we get to that point this season. I don't know. Maybe we will. I don't know. We'll see. Look, this is the best route. This is the and, – and also, I mean, if – Let's let's go super like naively optimistic. Just talking about Bulls' development. Forget shipping him out of town, but just helping him learn these things, become a more winning player and not just talented player. This is where you iron out those kinks. So hopefully, someone in his camp is in his ear saying, "Hey, man, this is not 
a uh, consequence. This is an opportunity, and, and you need to seize it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go uh, up and down the rest of the roster pretty quickly here. Devon Reed, we know Devon Reed. Mr. Dependable. Mr. Dependable. <laughs> He's back with the Nuggets for uh, or with the gold for the G League season. Matt Ryan, he's a shooter the Nuggets picked up this summer. Actually had some pretty impressive highlights in the uh, summer league. I think he played with the Cavs. But we heard some he good can... stuff about him, too. I mean, obviously, he was never yeah. going to make that NBA roster, but this is a guy who played well in these workouts. Yeah, he can really shoot it. He's kind of a big body, too. Hmm. Trevon Duvall is actually a little interesting. Uh, Duvall, you probably remember him most people that are listening to this from Duke. He was a really high recruit, top 10 recruit uh, unanimously went to Duke was a one and done, but he went on drafted played in the G league for a couple of years. Never really had a ton of success played in Canada last year, actually professionally. Um, but Denver selected him in the G league draft in the second round in that. And um, I kind of want to see what he can do. You know, just a, a former high prospect guy who never really caught on anywhere. Uh, but, you know, maybe with the Nuggets development program, they can they can get him on the right track. He's a guy who a lot of people thought, you know, was going to be a star in the NBA at one point. Uh, I wasn't aware of this until about five minutes ago. I'm now excited to see Manny Camper play because what a name. What an under name. That's a good one. I don't know yeah. anything about him, but that's a that's a strong name. Well, I'll tell you, Manny Camper and Marcus Burke are the two guys vote who are on this team from the public tryout that mm. the Grand Rapids Gold had. Those are the two players who made the team from the public tryout. My guy River didn't make it. Shout out the fan vote, Wash Park. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, I forgot they did that. That's actually really cool, man. I am now genuinely yeah. excited to see Manny and Marcus play. Yeah. Tariq Speaking Black, of Marcus, he was on this. Oh, well, oh, I was ahead. just going to say really quick. And of course, Marcus. I mean, I got to see him. I got to see him get buckets. I'm into it. Yeah. I, I just want to see him. I just want to see how many points he can score in the G League. Like, that's that's he all locked. I want to see. Is he it locked. over under 40? Uh, Tariq Black, we know him from Summer League. Uh, teammate of Will Barton's at Memphis. Just a, a big body. Uh, he's really old for a G League guy. I think Tariq Black's like 30 years old. I think he's around Will Barton's age. Um, but he's clearly trying to maybe get another shot at the NBA or you know, just, just play some competitive basketball stateside. And Georgie. Georgie, uh, our guy who is also in summer league, uh, he is another probably b backup big. Maybe he'll start, but uh, another big on this Grand Rapids gold team. So a fun roster. I think you've got some star power. You've got some you got offense. you got defense. you got some shooting. So um, this, is, this is what we got. This is what we got to work with for the Grand Rapids gold this season. I'm excited to get going. Uh, tonight, they're in Sioux Falls. Dude, Adam hopping in. I got my own guy's name wrong. It was Nature. To be Dude, fair, though, how, how far off am I really? Um, but shout out Nature. Shout out Nature. Listen, <laughs> uh, though, yeah, Tariq, the Tariq Black did. He did go to Kansas. I think he also went to Memphis, though. Gotcha. 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 Well, listen, I don't want to interrupt the Tariq Black updates, but it is time to talk about Snooze Sleep. Snooze, uh, Snooze Flip. Snooze Flip brought to you by Snooze Sleep. Is one of the most universal mattresses on the planet. You can customize your sleep experience to fit your needs. One side's soft, the other side's firm. You can flip it to that side. Whatever side fits your body best, flip it. The cover is also reversible with one side up to five degrees cooler, and it's cozy warm on the other side. The zippable cover makes the Snoo Flip a true four in one mattress. Not just a true four in one, the only four in one. Good luck finding another one. Don't stress shopping through hundreds of beds online. Snoo's Flip has all the features in one bed, they'll ship it straight to your door. And if you needed another kicker, another reason, we can get you some money off. Use code DNVR, receive $250 off a mattress, $250 yep. off with adjustable base, queen mattress savings up to $500, dual split king savings up to $1,000. This is some of the best value we offer through any of these deals. If you're on the fence about getting a new mattress, do it with Snooze Sleep and uh, save some money with us. Also, yeah, Snooze talk. Sleep for real. Uh, incredible mattress. A lot of us at DNVR got hooked up with them. Best mattress that anybody at DNVR that got one has slept on. That's at least the reviews that I hear. So incredible product, really cool sponsor. Check those guys out. 
We also want to help out the uh, homeowners out there and people in the buyer's market. Something to keep in mind for the homeowners with prices going up, it's creating natural equity in your home. If you have mortgage insurance, chances are you can refinance out of that, make the bubble work for you. And also, if you're in the buyer's market, then you definitely know how stressful it is to buy a house right now. Uh, the housing market is crazy in Colorado. Let us help you. Let Mike and Virginia Chevalier help you. They'll take the burden off this extremely difficult process. They'll alleviate so much stress and worry off your plate. You should know by now, if you're a, a regular listener, they've got a fun perk for you. If you visit them at dnvrmortgage.com and enter to, win, uh, enter to win a free shirt or hat of your choice, you can also get set up with a free consultation to discuss all your options. One more time, that's dnvrmortgage.com. Call Virginia directly at 303-257-6578. Call Mike directly at 970-412-2472. That's Michael Chevalier, NMLS number 193-1006. Virginia Chevalier, NMLS number 1910631. And finally, it's time to make beef business your business because we're in business with the best in the beef business. Holiday meat train coming through. Hop on right now. You've got 15% off your beef with code DMVR15 at Hassle Cattle Company. And of course, any orders total exceeding $200, you're going to get free shipping, right? Maybe you just want to try this stuff before you throw down your... Uh, like a big order, well, come on over to the DNVR bar, York and Colfax. Those burgers on that revamped menu made with delicious Wagyu goodness. Check out Hassle Cattle Company. Use code DNVR15. Save 15%. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, welcome back to the DNVR Nuggets podcast, the DNBA show presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Like you just heard, use, DNV, use the code DNVR. Sign up, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Vote. Let's go over some mulligans that we already have for our preseason <laughs> predictions yes. 11 games in i think there's some stuff we already want to take mulligans on so you know we'll admit we don't get all our preseason predictions right we get a lot of them right we don't get all of them right but we have some mulligans that we probably have to address i'll go first i predicted boldly on the michael porter jr player preview that he would make an all-star game he would yeah. make the all-star game this season. Uh, that does not look like it's going to happen. The path to Michael Porter doing that would be, A, the Nuggets are very good and are near the top of the West while all-star balloting is getting done. That can happen. Uh, the Nuggets are ascending in the Western Conference. They're you know up towards the top half right now. But Michael Porter is not holding up his end of the bargain. He's averaging 9.9 .9 points uh, through nine games, shooting 34% from the field, 21% from three. 6.6 6 rebounds. The rebounding's been there. But, you know, with him, it's it's all about scoring. That's what, what was potentially going to get him on an all-star team this season. It just hasn't happened. And now he's hurt. And it just seems like it's going to be nearly impossible for him to come back and make an all-star team and fulfill that preseason bold prediction that I had. So a bit of a unfortunate one, a bit of a tough one there, but got to come to grips with it. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to climb on that train car with you, man. I talked my shit all summer. I said, I don't know about the playoffs, but I know about the regular season. This guy will be a terror. Now there's plenty of time for him to come around and realize that, but who am I kidding through 11 games? I'm as wrong as wrong can be on that one. Um, and I'll tell you what, the last thing I expected, and there's all these reasons to go, okay, maybe he'll struggle because of XYZ, was just that the shot would fail him. And I know it's not the only factor, and it can be a little reductive, but it's the biggest factor. And I'm telling you, if these open jumpers are going in, we're not sweating half this other stuff half as much. So it's crazy. It's hard to believe, but as wrong as wrong gets on that one so far. Um, I also... Was really looking forward to year two of Facundo Compazzo. Um, I don't know how much analysis was required here. Thought he'd play better. He's played worse. Now he's with a unit that uh, is everyone's dragging each other down, you know, and no, none of these guys are complimenting each other's skill sets right now. And I think Faku is looks the worst because of it, but he's also among the very biggest factors in it. And, um, yeah, really wrong about that one. So sorry about that victory lap I took two weeks ago after he played really well one time. <laughs> I really wanted it to happen. Yeah, I mean, it's been tough for Faku for sure. I mean, if you just look at like 
the plus minus leaderboard and non leaderboard in the NBA. Uh, he's minus 97 right now towards the bottom. Yeah. That's the fifth worst plus minus in the NBA. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that he's, you know, playing with a bench unit that has just sucked all season. Um, but yeah, it's been tough for him. Look, I don't think Faku is done for good. Like he's going to no. get another shot. Yep. Um, he got a shot last night in the first half. He didn't play in the second half, which I'm actually going to talk about in a second. Um, but he'll, he'll get another shot. There'll be injuries. There'll be stuff. There'll be a chance for him to, you know, prove it again. Um, but right now, yeah, it doesn't seem like he's building on last season. So vote in the preseason. I predicted that Bones Highland would play 20 minutes a game post all-star break. It's pretty much happening already. He's like Ooh. getting up near 20 minutes a game in the 10th, 11th game of the season. It's already happened. And the craziest part about how Bones Highland's playing so much and the Nuggets are using him last night. And this goes into what I was just saying about Faku and how he played in the first half, didn't play in the second half. The Nuggets are totally, it seems like, turning over the second unit to Bones Highland when Will Barton's not in the game with that group. When Barton's not staggering, it seems like to me the second unit is pretty much just like, all right, Bones, yep, do it up. It's like do summer what you do. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. And last night, Malone changed his rotation in the second half. He put Marcus Howard in the game. He took Faku out. And my thinking behind that was, I don't know if this was what Malone was doing. I have to think it is, though. He wanted another shooter to space the floor while Bones just went to work in the pick and roll with that second unit. So he's already making like substitutions and tweaking his rotation around Bones Highland. Um, his ascension has been crazy. His poise, his feel in the pick and roll. I just think he's special. I think the kid's special. And the ascension, I think, is going to keep going. He he will be playing over 20 minutes per game post-All-Star break, I think. But you know, it could maybe even be more than that. I just think he's going to keep playing more and more. And like he said last night, once the shot starts falling, it's going to be scary. Yeah, crazy, man. And hopefully that helps uh, another prediction I'd like to take a mole on eventually come around. I was extremely confident in this offense with the starters uh, being <laughs> yeah. not elite, but, but potent again, right? Maybe five sure. through eight, somewhere in that territory. Now, this is linked to another take I was super wrong on, which is that Michael Porter Jr. would look awesome, and he's looked not awesome. So that's a big, big factor in this. All the same, uh, the Nuggets are now a defensive team and struggle to score. So my bad. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's crazy that we're at this point with this team. But look, I don't want to put it all on him, but if Michael Porter was shooting his career average from three, the Nuggets would be like the 13th or 14th best three-point shooting team in the NBA. And the offense right. would look a lot better. Um, right. So yeah, uh, he's, he's a big reason why the offense just hasn't been there. All right, I'm going to take a mulligan on this being the PJ Dozier breakout season. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can still get to that. I'm not willing to say this is definitely not going to be the PJ Dozier breakout season, but so far <laughs> I'm struggling to see how we get there. I had big expectations for Dozier this season. I honestly thought he could be like the guy that Will Barton is with that second unit, the focal point, the guy that's, you know, initiating a lot of pick and roll, the guy that's kind of, being the captain of that bench group. But P.J. Dozier just hasn't been that guy. I mean, he's playing 19 minutes. He's playing like 20 minutes a game, but shooting it terribly from three. I mean, he's never been a good three-point shooter. There's been some noise that, you know, maybe he can improve, but that doesn't look like it's been the case. He yeah. has been good rebounding the ball, uh, yes. particularly on the offensive glass over the last couple of games. He Underrated. finally got that tip dunk to go last night, a tip dunk he's been trying for this entire season. He's been just flying in on the offensive glass. He finally got one last night. His defense has been good. Like I said, his rebounding has been good, but offensively, I definitely expect him to take a step and he's just kind of invisible. A lot of times on the offensive end of the floor, I feel like, so I, I had higher expectations for him. You know, I, I didn't actually. And for me, it's not that I've never liked PJ. I've just always asked myself, who is PJ Dozier? And 
I think we know. I mean, look, he's still young. And like you said, 11 games in. But he's a guy who is mostly winning games with, like you just said, ooh, look at that effort on the glass. Like, oh, look at that yeah. defense. Look at that spurt of energy the Nuggets just got when he checked in in the second half. He's not really uh, an – I mean, I don't really see him have a really strong feel for the for the floor. And I know he, Patrick's saying he hasn't played guard yet uh, this year, but – you know, I just don't think he sees the floor super well, and I think he gets sped up pretty easily on offense. Now, those are things that improve with time, especially time at the guard position, which, again, PJ's always kind of been a victim of a funky role in Denver. I just think to best appreciate him, ask yourself, who is he and how is he going to help the Nuggets win? And I think we were a little bit closer to our answer. The offense, it, it may never come around. I can't hear you. I don't know if that's me or if you're muted. Oh, but there we go. There we go. Sorry, I muted myself. You're good. Maybe I just had the wrong idea of the type of offensive player he was going to be. Like guys in the comments are saying, he was really good defensively last night. He's been yep. getting some mid-range shots to go. But I just thought he would be kind of a Will Barton type who's a high pick and roll guy, gets into the teeth of the defense, makes stuff happen there. Um, yeah, like – Dylan says right here, I think this is a good point. He hasn't forced anything. He's been giving what the defense – he's been taking what the defense is giving him. I kind of want him to force some things, <laughs> you know. I kind of want him to to expand his game a little bit because I think the Nuggets' second unit could use some of that. Hey, I love when he takes it to the rack. I really do. Um, he can do that confidently. His physical profile, like he's a hard guy to match up with, especially coming off the bench. So there's plenty he does well. I guess I just think like, ooh, popping threes off the dribble, like running pick and rolls. Like, I just don't know if he's ever going to do that at a high level. Um, but whatever. He's young and the season's young. So we'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. I still really like PJ Dozier. I, I still like him as a role player. I just want him to take that next step offensively. Right, right. No, it's fair. I mean, we talked about a breakout. We certainly haven't seen one. Um, another thing that could change with time, I was right there with all the executives who called Jeff Green the best signing of the offseason, um, just in terms of a value deal, right, in a vacuum, in a vacuum, take your drinks. But, and he hasn't been terrible. But, again, like, I was I was very, I very quickly reminded of my previous, my prior perspective on Jeff Green before the Nuggets which was a talented player who is going to frustrate you, who's going to go in and out with some mental lapses of focus and production. Um, and because he was this steadying sort of veteran presence in Brooklyn, I really wanted to think of him that way. And he can be that way over time in Denver. But so far, we have seen a little bit of the, like, on one hand, oh, that was really cool from Jeff. On the other hand, like, hey, Jeff, what are you doing, man? Especially on defense. <laughs> I think you're muted again, man. Damn, I don't know why this keeps happening. <laughs> um, Jeff Green has the vibe of a guy who's entering, what is it, his 15th year, 16th year in yes. the NBA. Yes. Yeah. And knows he's going to be playing in the playoffs, and it's game number 11. Yep. That's my read on it. I think he can flip the switch, and his biggest problem. I think has been just like his engagement level. He just gets beat on defense a lot. Yep. And I trust that he can flip the switch and be engaged again uh, when, when it really matters. So I think if I had to just look into my crystal ball, that we'll see less of that when the games start to matter a little more. He's also, like you said, a veteran who's played for like half the league and, yeah. It's a, you know, technically a two-year deal, but it's a player option. So it's a one-year deal, right? And I think this is a guy who's approaching this like he's on a one-year deal. He hasn't made much of an effort to ingratiate himself with the org or the fans, um, like a concerted effort in the way maybe like RJ Hampton did coming in out of the draft or whatever. But that's also probably to be expected. So I look, it's better that he's on the roster than not on um, whatever the two green things together is, how we figure that out, how Malone figures that out more aptly. We'll see, but... Um, it's just been it's just been less than this, you know, beautiful, wonderful kind of addition that we envisioned. Yeah, totally. My final mulligan from our preseason predictions kind of goes along with that, but my take was that the Nuggets don't need a true backup center. Ah, <laughs> and my thinking behind that was it worked last year, right? <laughs> it worked last year with Paul Millsap and Jamichael Green. 
Paul Millsap and Jeff Green, they're not that different of players. Yeah, like I think Paul Millsap's a little better defender and Jeff Green's a little more versatile of an offensive player, but they're not that different. Paul Millsap, actually, looking back on it now, uh, probably a, a better shooter you know, than Jeff Green definitely mm. has been, but maybe just is. Right. But I thought right. it would work mostly because it worked last year. And we know the Dos Verdes and that bench lineup has not worked. And it was one game, but we saw what that bench unit can look like with a true rolling five in Zeke yep. Naji. And another part of that is you have Bones Highland kind of captaining that bench unit too. You didn't have that at the very beginning of the season. But, you know, things look better with Zeke. Um, I, I don't like, I'm not going to sit here and say the Nuggets have to go out and trade for, uh, like a backup five and play that guy 20 minutes a night. Um, maybe they will, maybe they'll find another JaVale McGee, but things looked good with Zeke Naji last night. Hear me out. Isaiah Hartenstein's playing well in Los Angeles. I'm just saying maybe he's available. Um, pain, <laughs> deep pain. No, the Naji thing was interesting because, and that's what I was talking about earlier with, okay, this could be more than just a feel-good story. We are yeah. probably going to be trying to figure out how to split those two guys up because it's just too redundant next to each other. And as of now, unless you're going to go externally, Najee's that best option. So that was cool, man. It was fun. My dad told, also said this on the show, but my dad texted me last night. He was like, I don't know why, but I find Zeke Najee very easy to root for. And you know what? Strong agree. <laughs> Strong agree. He's a big man with long hair. Like those, those guys just pop off the screen, man. Those guys are true, easy to root for. True. They're a hustle guy, just gritty, you know, just tons of grit. I do, I do feel like though, when I, I enjoyed this segment, I feel um cleared the air, got some things off my chest, but also something close to negative, something close to negative when the vibes are really on their way up. So I do want to take this opportunity to get about two minutes left in the show to say, it's fun being a Nuggets fan again right now, just like that, all of a sudden. And I said it on the show last night. I've been repeating myself all show. But don't give up on these guys, man. you got to trust the Nuggets, especially in the regular season. The Jokic Malone Nuggets have earned our trust. Next time there's a 4-4 four and four stretch, it's our job to diagnose what's going wrong and, and take it into account. But just in terms of like, oh, man, this is tough. This isn't fun. This is what What's it going to take to fix it? They're good. Th these guys are good, uh, especially when healthy. So... Uh, it's just fun to be back in this headspace again. Yeah. I mean, they're seven and four with the second best defense in the NBA and an offense that's trending up. It's trending up. It's not trending down. It's trending up. Uh, so we'll see uh, what happens. The Nuggets have the Hawks on Friday at home. Uh, we'll be in the lounge, of course, pre and post game. Guys, if you're not a DNVR subscriber, I know we got a lot of people who come in this chat who watch this show Monday through Friday, five days a week, and sometimes on the weekends too, that don't read and aren't DNVR members and don't uh, subscribe to the content on the DNVR.com. Check it out. There's a lot of cool stuff. I write an article after every game, after talking with Michael Malone, after talking with the players. Vote writes grades after every single game. We have Adam breaking down film on the list on the DNVR.com. So if you want to become a member, if you want access to that type of content, Go to the dnvr.com backslash subscribe. That's where you can find all of our content. We'll have more coming up this week, this weekend. Maybe some Grand Rapids gold content as well. We'll see. We'll see. Whoa. We'll see. Whoa. Hey, I got to say, the doing the show in the bar is so fun, but you miss some stuff not being in Ball Arena and still a credential media member. Still need to be up to date, day to day. No better way for me to do that than reading Wins Pieces the day after. Might sound weird because I talk to him all the time, but I like to read your stuff, man. That Barton piece was great. So if you are if you are with us day to day on everything in front of the paywall, you like these shows, you like Wins commentary, you have questions about what the Nuggets are going to do next, you got to subscribe. You got to become a member and tap into that written content because it's worth it. And I see somebody asking how to watch the Grand Rapids Gold game. Um, to be honest, it's very easy. The tonight's game's on ESPN plus. So you just have to log into ESPN and it's right there on ESPN plus great quality. You don't have to go to an illegal streaming website to watch it. 
And if they're not on ESPN Plus, I think it's just NBAGLeague.com. They stream right on there. So the games are super easy to watch. Way easier to watch the Nuggets games, actually. Um, so <laughs> tune in tonight if you want to watch those Grand Rapids Gold guys play. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. We'll be back in the pregame lounge 30, min- 30 minutes before the Nuggets and Hawks on Friday. We'll be running it back post game as well. I'll talk to you guys then.